Welcome to our Wednesday devotion as we continue to look at the topic of trust. Trusting God. Today, we realize that we can trust God to protect us in every situation that we face. One hates to talk about their family, but it happened in our family one time. Mary and Joel were coming back from Luther Prep in Watertown, Wisconsin. They were just west of Wall, coming back to Rapid. You know that big hill just west of Wall? They're coming down that hill, and all of a sudden, there they were, a ton of deer on the interstate. Joel was driving, and Mary said he just went here and there, dodge this, dodge that. They got through that entire herd and didn't hit a thing. They looked at each other, their eyes wide open. Holy cats. They recognized God protected us. And my guess is we all have one of those God protected us stories that we could tell as well. You think of all the miles the members of our congregation, our extended family have driven, and yet God has kept us safe. God protects his people. Peter came to understand that Peter had every reason to trust God. He walked with Jesus. He heard Jesus. He saw Jesus drive demons out. He saw Jesus feed 5,000 men and their wives and children with very little food. He saw miracle after miracle. He heard the teachings of Jesus. He heard teachers, Jesus say, don't be worried, but rather trust God to, to meet every one of your needs. He saw the crowds that followed Jesus. He heard Jesus' message of love and compassion. But I wonder, too, if there were maybe times when Peter might have doubted. You know, John the Baptist beheaded. A number of people walked away from Jesus. The Pharisees wanted to kill him. And so what a blessing for Peter to have this take place in his life. It was shortly after Jesus had fed the 5,000, again, showing love and compassion and power to so many people. After that miracle of feeding the 5,000, Jesus sent the disciples across the Sea of Galilee. He went up on a mountain to pray. The disciples thought nothing of crossing the Sea of Galilee. Being fishermen, they'd been on the water quite a bit. But this time, a, a terrible storm came up, threatening to sink their boat. Jesus is watching this take place from a mountain because he's omnipresent and omniscient. He sees them, he cares about them, so he comes to them. Remember how he walked on the waters of the Sea of Galilee? In their fright, the disciples see that person walking on the Sea of Galilee, and they think that they're seeing a ghost, and that frightens them even more. But then Jesus speaks to them. He said, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. When Peter heard the voice of Jesus telling them not to be afraid, he said, Lord, if it is you, let me come to you on the water. And Jesus simply said, well, come. And Peter did. And I don't know how you picture Peter getting out of that boat. Did he just hop over the side of the boat and start walking to Jesus? Or did was he a little bit more timid, maybe putting one leg over and testing the waters, then the other leg testing the waters, holding on as he takes a few steps, recognizing I am walking on water, then he lets go and he walks to Jesus. It's absolutely fantastic. Until Peter maybe looks around a little bit and hears the wind and sees the waves and the spray of the water in his face and he thinks, I shouldn't be able to do this and bam, he started to sink. And Peter said, Lord, save me, I perish. And you know what Jesus did immediately? He reached out his hand and picked him up and just like that, they're in the boat and Peter realized what? I can trust Jesus to protect me in every situation no matter how nasty it might be. What's your favorite? Jesus will protect me in every situation, no matter how nasty it might be, passage in the Bible. Might it be from the book of Exodus where the Lord simply said, the Lord will fight for you, you need only to be still? Maybe it's a passage in, in Joshua where God said, have I not command you to be strong and courageous for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Maybe, maybe the book of Isaiah where God says, fear not for I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. One of the Psalms, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. Maybe in the book of Romans, if God be for us, who can be against us? Or maybe this passage, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid no matter what you face. Don't be afraid because you know who you are. Because of your spirit-worked faith in Jesus, you're God's child. You're his son. You're his daughter. 
You're his son and his daughter because on the cross Jesus said it's finished and he showed how he has protected us and will protect us from the curse of sin, from the grip of death, from the, the damning accusations of the devil. It's finished. Because of our faith in Jesus, God looks at you and says, you are my child. You are my dearly beloved son. You are my dearly beloved daughter. He loves you. So when you face any difficulty in life, financial, health, relationship, job related, whatever it might be, look at Jesus come to you and hear him say to you, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. We pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your presence in our life, for your goodness and grace. Lead us to trust you in times of difficulty, knowing your love and your power, and your, knowing your desire to deliver us. Keep us safe. Bless us now. Bless us always for Jesus' sake. Amen.